Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to look at uh, finishing out the uh, sketchbook section of the videos with looking at adding washes to uh, the drawings. So I've already done a series of drawings and uh, to expedite the process a little bit uh, I'll go ahead and do some washes uh, on those drawings so we can um, shorten maybe the length of the video and you can get uh, the idea of what to do with the washes. So the materials I've got here t for the washes are uh, just a simple jar of, of water. You can see that. Clean water, nothing special. A, a nice uh, brush here uh, from Windsor Newton. Uh, you might think it's, it's big, but it, it really isn't. It uh, really comes together nicely into uh, a very fine point you can uh, see there so you can get a very nice fine point and you can get a very thick uh, stroke on the side of it too as well if you need that this is a number eight from Windsor Newton the one thing I would suggest if you do go out and buy materials later on is you could you could buy student grade watercolor and uh, pens if you want but I would splurge on a very good uh, Windsor Newton brush uh, watercolor because if you take care of it it will last you literally years uh, and years and this is not really hard um, uh, making on a on a brush the the watercolor technique with drawing is really not too difficult in terms of time commitment I mean um, uh, making the brush really uh, get worn out so that's good there uh, what I have before you here is a tray of the Cotman Windsor Newton watercolors it comes in a little little tray here and I use these various colors from time to time but what I also do is replenish my color palette with bought Cotman replacement tubes and I have here in front of you the burnt sienna which is sort of the um, brownish burnt orangey tone the burnt umber which is a brown tone uh, I really don't use black for washes I have some black watercolor in here and then I also have a red cadmium red deep hue here as well and I lay those out uh, on my palette so I'm going to go ahead and do that now um, and I'm going to keep them wet it's just easier now I could dip into these colors too if I want and that's fine they're a little drier so they might take long to to come up and get wet but they're they're fine and usable especially for this technique I'm not a watercolorist uh, purist by any means of the imagination but uh, if I was doing fine watercolor on watercolor paper I might always start from a wet point of view so I think you have that and then I have the two white marker pins for later on for the reflective uh, reflections in the eye we talked about that and then of course just a paper towel to wipe wipe things off so I'm going to move these out of the screen um, and you'll see that I have a little GoPro camera that I set up for these little demos because um, so there's nothing really slick about them and I, I want to keep them that way so I can keep the cost down because I can do all the video editing myself right here at home or in my office and I can get these out to my students really pretty quickly so there's nothing flashy about the production so what I have here in front of you now is two different drawings one on the left um, both of these I believe are studies from Goya the one on the left uh, we're gonna work on first with the wash the one on the right I put just a simple drawing wash on top of them and to kind of walk you through the process so I, I generally procedure wise I do the drawing first which you see here and then I start to come back and I put on some watercolor wash now what I do generally is I work from light to dark and sometimes I mix the material uh, the watercolor together sometimes I don't what I do is just wet it in my palette and get it ready so it looks something like that as I'm starting to work and I work generally work in three stages okay what does the three stages mean well I work from a light wash in to a medium wash in to a dark wash in 
And a lot of times I'll let each, each of the three stages, which is really a layer, I'll just call them layers, a lot of times I'll let them dry before I start another layer. So I'll go ahead and, and work here as I'm doing a wash. And I'm working from a Goya reproduction. And I'll go ahead and start to lay in. So I'm not only covering her hair, but I'm also covering the background, which is darker in the image I'm, I'm working in too as well. So we'll cover her a little bit through here. <clears throat> and up and over. So you have, you know, you have a lot of artistic license really with the background as you want. And so, you know, I'm just very lightly going over the, the wash, the drawing with a wash here. Working from really left to right, but uh, you don't necessarily have to follow that down through there. And I'm essentially blocking in the shadow tones of the drawing that I'm making, but also working from the painting, the master study from Goya. So what I'm trying to create here is a simple uh, patterning of light and dark as well. And so see how I can turn the brush on the side here and get a little bit more down here on my palette and really cover a lot of distance very very quickly that's what you want you want to get in and out with your washes pretty quick there it's really about the drawing and these washes are enhancing or to enhance the drawing more than anything anything else okay so we've got a pretty good situation through there and I might come in with just a little more now in the sometimes I'll kind of wipe a little bit off if I need some more on the tip just to get some of the wetness heavier wetness off and then now I'll come in and coat get into some more specific areas of the drawing where I see it and through here underneath the nose and through here just to emphasize a little little more the importance of the shadow tone and quality, planes of the nose, where I'm at with the particulars of the image here, image quality here. Okay. Alright, so I feel like I've got a pretty good headway there. Now I'm gonna, that's already fairly dry enough. This, this will dry pretty quick. I'm going to jump on to my second layer and I'm going to add a little bit of the brown tone and that sepia tone together and I'll drop a little bit more water in there to make it a little little lighter. Sometimes I'll move over here and add a little bit in through there. You Hopefully you can see that. Okay. And I'll start to drop a second tone in through here, and I think I'm going to stay out of the background tone now. And I'm just going to work her hair, which is pretty flat in terms of this wash. You know, I keep my washes general, pretty simple. All the details really much done in the the drawing itself, so I want to keep it pretty pretty simple. I'm just trying to elevate the or enhance the experience of looking at the major parts of the drawing in through here. It's not really, I don't consider it painting even though you know I'm using washes and a brush but I'm still pretty much enhancing the quality of of drawing and certainly you could come in here and you could render these out for hours and hours but again the point is to get in and out of a fairly quick sketch fairly quickly. Hopefully the the uh, highlight on the, the watercolor sheen is not too terribly bad. Okay. So you can see that without it, the glistening part of it and through here. So I'm going to get her head sash, her shawl, whatever she's wearing here. And I can start to take some liberties with that coming down and over. Getting a few brush strokes in through here. 
So I'll dip in and get a little bit more paint, wipe some of that off of there, and I'll get it under this chin a little bit. So even though it's watercolor, you don't have to load your brush up. You can uh, essentially keep it very minimal with the amount of pigment that you have on your brush itself. So now I'm working with primarily the tip, just to get in here on the eyebrows a little bit. Just touches of the plane of the nose, underneath the, the nose area proper, in through here. maybe slightly around the eye. So I'm working again from a Goya image. I don't have a printout of it, but it's in the Goya section of the web gallery of art website under Goya. Uh, one of his commissioned self-portraits. No, excuse me, portraits. It wouldn't be a self-portrait, no. Not, not a self-portrait. And then lastly, I'll add a little bit more dark to that, so we'll go darker even, just for some areas of interest, here, maybe around the side. And you could go back with the pen if you wanted, or you could use the ink and brush, which is what I'll do just to show you that, up through here. Maybe a touch in the side of the lip. And on the side of the face. I generally don't render all the particularities. There is a certain shorthand that goes on with sketching that I'm looking for and I want in a sketch to greatly reduce the complexity but also the time the time factor of that, you want to get in and out with your analysis as we're not copying but we're analyzing the image or the composition of what Goya is giving us. Maybe just a little bit up and through here and downward. <clears throat> you know, just about there. I think that's probably enough. Right in through here. Maybe I can tone this down. That's a little bit too light. In through here, and I'll bring bring this back up. Here we go, and I think you get the idea. Okay. All right. So there's the first one down. And you can see I built the image up through the drawing, through three layers or three um, uh, phases of the watercolor usage from a light to a medium tone to the darkest tone and built that up. And this will dry in about five more minutes tops and it um, will be ready to go for another page. So we'll stop here and let's move on to another image. Okay, for this study, we're going to do a little bit larger image. So I've got a little bit more space to cover, but it doesn't really change anything in terms of uh, technique, etc. This uh, image is by uh, William Hogarth, self-portrait. He has a little dog in it, but I just uh, utilized the head. So. For this one, I'm going to make a little bit more redder wash. I'm going to add a little bit of the red into the sepia tone to give it a little bit more of a redder tone just to, oh, just to have for variety. So I'll show you the color I'm mixing. So I'm mixing the red into the sepia tone over and through here. And I can use it as a base. And it's fairly watery already, so it will come out much, much lighter. And I'll add a little bit of water to it. And then, so I'm going to work really now much more broadly with the with the brush, so I can really cover a lot of different areas. So I'm working not only the foreground image of the composition, but also uh, the background tone 
uh, as well. So I'm not as careful in the background tone, but I am more careful in the uh, positioning of the shadows. I'm following the shadow forms uh, through Hogarth here in his uh, head structure. And a lot of it's really done already by the pen rendering um, already. So I can start to lay that in. As we're working through here. And you can see how just by adding the wash, you know, you already you get a lot of work done for you in terms of the uh, image kind of popping and coming out, coming really kind of coming alive pretty quickly. Most of this is all in shadow down in through here. Hopefully you can catch that uh, in the camera. The only, the only problem with using this GoPro camera is it doesn't have a back viewfinder image, so... I have to spend a lot of time trying to figure out well that did that actually get in the in the camera shot or not so my apologies on that okay so I'm going to come down here and put a little tone in through there gather up some more material more pigment then I'm going to come over here and lay lay in so what I'm looking for is to separate the light side from the dark side of the image, or the shadow side actually, uh, pretty resolutely, pretty quickly. And again, a lot of it's already done through the pen. The shadow shape forms are done pretty quickly in through here. And so I can just enhance my drawing pretty quickly and pretty easily. It gives it a softer sensation um, because the pen tone in this drawing does a lot of it already for you, but it does give you a nice Fill for the background that fills it up pretty quickly so I can start to layer all this in and just being careful and continuing to watch my edges pretty resolutely and fairly quickly in through here So, and you can see that already that's uh, giving us a nice uh, sensation of the image popping popping out. Now, I could go a little bit further than that. There's really not, I, sometimes I might just leave it like that. It's kind of an aesthetic choice. Um, I'm going to darken in a little bit, so I'm going to add, mix up a little bit more color here keep it slightly on the redder side and I'm going to just hit my core shadows. So core shadows are those shadows that separate light from dark. They're the the fattest part of the form turning away from the light. So if the light source is again hitting from the top right, these shadows right in through here are your core shadows. And so I'm going to emphasize those just a little bit more through wash like they've been done uh, in pen in through here a little bit more just to give a little bit of pop to the image. I can see where I can enhance through here and maybe up in through here a little bit and then I can start to kind of feather those over quite so dark and kind of blend those in Wash it throughout, and you can see how that starts to liven up the image uh, even a bit further. So, you know, I'm always layering from in watercolor since it is transparent from light to dark. You don't want to go generally too dark too quick, although you could break those rules. I, I'm certainly about breaking the rules, but in this case, it just since we're keeping it such a traditional academic type of approach. It's best to work from light to dark. To here. And then I could even sketch, and if I want to come over here and kind of re-sketch some, uh, catch, 
catch that it's also nice to sketch in the with a pen in through here with a brush I mean in through here and over just to kind of catch those edges keep it as a nice kind of fresh sketch keep it to the truth of the the image that Hogarth is giving us I had a chance to see a lot of Hogarth Hogarth works at the National Gallery in London uh, last year they were spectacular it was a privilege to see those in person. There we go. Can blend those in. Get this, lay this in a little bit. Maybe lay in the collar and the chest here. Just a touch more. Okay. I might add a little bit more tone here on the right side. of the image where the his hat is just to pop out this whole area right in through here kind of right in through here and coming down that might be a little too dark let me pull, pull this down a little bit so you can see it through here there we go and kind of watch my edges make sure those edges are crisp where his form ends and then I'll start to laying where the head and the hair and the hat kind of come in here and I might just sketch that out and let that blend up and that might be enough right in through there okay all right so I think that's uh, gonna get it for this one that's probably all I would do to this sketch maybe just throw in a touch of, of material on the top of the lip and I think you know, the pen has done a lot of the work but you can see where the wash helps to enhance the pen uh, you can cover a lot of ground with the uh, uh, wash and not have to use so much of your ink and it gives it a freshness that's some time on the form in an academic approach. Okay, so let's go on to uh, another small one. Let's see another example. Okay, for this study we're going to do uh, finish out a watch for this uh, captivating image that uh, I drew from El Greco. A uh, really wonderful, um, powerful image that El Greco gave us of a portrait of a woman. Uh, the image is uh, much less elongated than he normally does, so it's a nice study for us to look at the, um, the way he renders uh, light. So I'm going to use a little bit darker palette for this one, and so mostly sepia brown in brown tones. You really, you could mix up almost any color you want it's your preference later on my students I want to keep you hold you to sepia brown or sanguine type uh, of material so for this one we'll work in kind of a medium tone or a lighter medium tone and we'll push to a darker tone as well so we'll start out by hitting the hair in through here and uh, again what I'm trying to do is block in the shadow tone and I really harp up with my students to separate your works into one two-step drawing so what does that mean well producing one is the light side and then two is the dark side so what you really have is a drawing that is easily recognizable in terms of light and dark uh, shadow production so your eye can distinguish the overall pattern of visual communication very quickly very succinctly so that when you do move to specifics you are capable of rendering out or painting out drawing out however means you're you're finishing your image in a way that is um, if you're going to be working more traditional is more rational to the craft of representational art so that's and that's what the goal is for these particular studies so uh, one two step painting light side dark side light side dark side what's the light where's the light out and where is the dark side and you want to get there pretty quickly I try to uh, harp them with my students to get that done pretty quick and I'm using only one value at the moment and that's this medium toned um, wash on the paper and I could probably even lighten it up for some of the shadows on the face here 
but I'll go ahead and continue on with the with the background tone and look how that big brush really does nicely with small areas of value and then when we want to get into you know really larger areas where I have I don't have a lot of time I can lay that in I can turn that brush to the side and really let that value or the wash just come on through and come on down and you could dry brush that a little bit like that was happening or you can leave it more wet like I, I re-wet the brush there pretty quickly she's got a fur coat on so we'll kind of just pooch that out a little bit and take her over okay so that's going pretty well there so I'm going to add a little bit of tonality to the cheek area and the forehead bring those areas out okay and so I kind of dab down my brush with the paper towel to get some of the real thick wet uh, the real wetness out of the watercolor a little bit so the the washes just enhance that which I've drawn. I try to keep it mostly again. It's I think of it as a wash drawing. If you go back and look at many different artist studies, Watteau, Fragonard, uh, Tiepolo, um, Pontormo, certainly Michelangelo, Raphael, and on Bronzino, on and on. You can see they're wonderful wash studies and this is where we get that technique of one to two values two or three values maybe tops light side dark side with a coarse shadow that separates and then you get the illusion of de depth and dimension in properties of light very very quickly and it's a very readable image very very quickly which is what you want okay so just moving around the cheekbone in through here and the lips. So a lot of times I just follow along where I drew. Enhance that. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the hair a little bit further. The painting and the drawing are close. The painting has a little bit, uh, it has a really dark background, but I don't really care to belabor that any further. What I want to do is just slightly enhance her hair out. Uh, pop it out just a little touch more so I'm going to add one more layer of dark wash to it kind of vary it just a little bit and have her hair pop out just a little more over and down add a little pigment to that and there you go Get just a little bit more coarse shadow in through there. And I think that's enough. And so I think you get the idea on that one as well. I could come down and maybe draw. Just enhance a touch of the brushwork. And of course you could do these studies all in brushwork if you wanted to as well. That's up to you. Okay. All right, let's move on to another. Okay, so with this last one, we'll work from a Anthony Van Dyke portrait. And this is one where we've got multicolor. And now, um, notice that I've left a lot of the image unfinished in the pen area through here. So if I want to give it a little bit more of a finished quality, this is where a wash comes in. Uh, great, great. Um, uh, the ability to have it really kind of fill in the gaps for you so it becomes a great way to finish out the drawing so I'll keep this one a little redder in general so I'm mixing up my pigment here and I'm going to start in so I just want to enhance that which is what I have now on the composition so I'm going to lay this in and it seems sloppy but I am there's a method to the reasoning here I want to follow her tonal patterns here in the hair and then along the side here of the composition and I can enclose the shadow of her the darker shadows in through here a little bit give her a little bit more 
volume to work from. And so this this wash is fairly, let me see if I can get make sure I get all that in. This wash is fairly liquid. And I'm probably gonna not gonna do much more than what I'm doing all over now just to just to pop out her features the light on the forehead primarily and in the the face I really want that to to pop out and kind of come out so I can just wash this down so this is probably the easiest of to do of all of them in that I'm really not doing a lot of thinking about the form even though I am thinking about the overall design the aesthetic even in a sketch, you're always, you're always doing that. And then, you know, ways in which I can enhance the focal point, which is obviously the central part of the, of the portrait uh, in through there. So that pretty much does it. Uh, I might add just a, a few more little wet washes of drawing tone in here just to have a little, little form, and, and, uh, form and interest kind of uh, emphasize a little bit of that which I've drawn, maybe up through here and over, kind of emphasize slightly the collar. Maybe go a little bit redder and through there just to change the tonal color, keep it interesting. And I think that's about it. I think that gets gets down to what I need to do in terms of enhancing the overall aesthetic of the drawing. So again, notice how I was able to not use pen and ink all over. This is about eight by 10, and that's a lot of space to use for a little pen nib. And so, you know, a lot of times I don't have the time or I don't want to invest the time in, you know, um, I wouldn't say slavishly rendering mindlessly, but having to utilize all that time rendering. So that's what where washes really come in to play nicely is they give you Hopefully you can see all that in the, the camera. They give you all that nice coverage um, without investing in a ton of time. And of course, if you wanted to go back and darken this, you can. But, you know, another thing about sketchbooks is the paper's fairly resilient, but, you know, the more layers of watercolor you add, the longer it takes to dry and then it starts to buckle. But I found that the, the, these particular sketchbooks are fairly resistant to buckling majorly over time and then when they do dry you can close them and they do flatten out over time. But again the point was to uh, enhance and trap in the light of the image by surrounding it with somewhat darker tones, light source coming from the top right, that means we're going to have more core shadow down to the bottom left and so I think you get uh, the idea with this one. Okay, so that gives you some examples of using washes with, within your sketchbook in, con, in conjunction with using a sketch pen. You could even sketch um, just with watercolor uh, brush if you wanted to. I don't prefer to, but a lot of artists can and do. So that'll be up to you. Those of you that are out there nationally, internationally, my students, I want you to use a pen for now and washes as well. Okay, so I hope you got something out of that, and we'll see you next time. Take care out there.